Hello guys, happy first day of self-employment to moi. This morning I woke up at 5.30 naturally. So usually I wake up at around 6 a.m. for work because I work EST hours and I'm in Vancouver right now. So I just have to wake up at six in the morning. But then today I naturally woke up at 5.30 and I just was so excited. I couldn't even go back to sleep. I didn't really vlog what I did earlier this morning. Oh my God, is this what my hair looks like? Keeping it real here guys, okay? So I did a ton of work today. I just like breezed through my to-dos, mostly emails though. I still have a lot of to-dos. I feel like a lot of people and partly why I was kind of scared to make the I quit my job video, by the way, if you haven't watched that or knew that I quit my job, first of all, why I like literally advertise it everywhere. No, I'm just kidding. I don't expect you to watch everything. It's just cause like, I'm so annoying about it. I did make a why I quit video. So you guys can go check that out if you guys want to. So I feel like part of the reason why I was like a little bit hesitant on making that video is because making this like super monumental announcement saying that like I quit my job. But in reality, you're not gonna see like a total change in day one. That's what makes this announcement kind of like nerve wracking for me because people are then expecting this like, or maybe you don't expect it. Maybe this is just me thinking it. I think people would assume like something big is gonna happen. Like for example, I didn't even post an Instagram photo today because I was just like, I think I'm just gonna let this news kind of like simmer. I feel like I'm really annoying on social media sometimes. In reality, like this month for me is gonna be a lot of strategizing, setting up the foundation of everything, re-strategizing. When I was balancing my full-time job and I was trying to do a lot of the influencer stuff, I almost felt like I was always just keeping my head above water, treading a campaign would come I would have to answer the email do the campaign and then then go to my full-time job if you guys watch the video you'll know that I'm really also trying to discover like some new things about myself so I think this month is gonna be largely like a very big foundation for me to kind of like really reset Sorry, my camera was just acting weird. As I was saying, I think this month is gonna be a lot of setting the foundation for me. I actually think I wanna do kind of like a self-development or like a goal setting video, or I don't know. Let me know in the comments if anyone's interested because I don't usually do that type of stuff. So yeah, like let me know. So a lot of the things are gonna be more behind the scenes. I don't think you're gonna see much of a change from me as an audience in the next month because I feel like a lot of the work is actually done behind the scenes. Like I said, read a little bit more books. Now that I have this free schedule, I really want to kind of set that and see what that's going to be like. I'm actually very grateful that I'm going back to Toronto now because for me in one week, and as you're watching, I'm probably in Toronto, but this Sunday I'm going to go back to Toronto and I'm going to be able to completely focus and zone out because as much as I have loved being in Vancouver, it's so distracting here. It's like so beautiful. I just want to kind of like play all the time. My parents are around. I just want to spend time with them. Like we have family movie nights like all the time, just the three of us because my brother's not here. I think when I go back to Toronto, I'll be able to actually like be in the zone and also Toronto is locked down. It might actually be good that it's locked down because I get to really totally focus. Even going back to Toronto, I think a huge thing for me is from what I remember my apartment to be, I think even like the first month, I'm gonna just be cleaning out my closet, completely resetting even my apartment, setting it up so that I have like a clear mental mind. I think I'm gonna do another video on how I increased my income because because that was one of the main questions, but a lot of it has to do with mental work. It's not actually the tangible things, surprisingly. That stuff will come much later. If you're interested in that video, also let me know. I think this week for me and even this month is gonna be a lot of, besides just like the foundational stuff, but what that really means for me is habits. What kind of habits am I gonna develop in this month that is really gonna like set me up for success, that it's gonna kind of like propel the next step because I think that back when I was in my corporate job, I was so unmotivated. I would wake up at like off hours. It's like not really set. I didn't feel motivated to go to the gym. I didn't feel motivated to eat healthy because I love that I have no one to bother me anymore and I don't have to listen to nobody. I just feel like it motivates me to wanna be healthier, to wanna do better. I actually wanna work out. I actually wanna eat healthy. So yeah, I think this is gonna be super interesting. The last thing that you're gonna see this week is because it's my last week in Vancouver and 
like I said, Toronto is locked down. So I'm going to be finishing up a lot more appointments. I'm also going to be doing a lot more like fun last minute Vancouver things that I'm going to enjoy. This week is not just about foundational setting and goal setting and habit setting, but also having fun and kind of like taking a week off. Like I finally just finished my corporate job. So it's kind of a little bit of a everything like errands week, celebration week, etc. So I'm going to take you guys along. I'm super excited because I'm finally getting my hair touched up. The last time that I got my hair dyed was back in Toronto, I believe in December. So I'm going to get a little trim and I'm going to get my roots touched up with color. I'm going to get my nails done before I go back to Toronto. I'm just like give me all the damn appointments i've gone to like ortho dentist like everything all of that also because i was like exhausting all my benefits last week that's gonna be the plan for this week so i'm very excited to take you guys along i hope you guys kind of like enjoy these self-employment series if you're watching like i said i've seen the comments in the other video so many people want to quit their jobs and i feel like as long as you you know measure the risk if you guys really like have a passion you want to follow i say go for it why live until we're 60 and regret our lives you know what i mean that's it for me for today but i will talk to you guys later this week hello guys today is tuesday and it is the second day of self-employment i love how i'm just like counting down it's like 10 years from now guys it is day 2500 i'm just kidding today is like i said tuesday it is the second day of self-employment as i mentioned yesterday this week is going to be pretty like not totally self-employment ish because the start of my self-employment is also coincidentally the last week of me being in vancouver since i'm about to enter toronto lockdown i really 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 need to take advantage of all the appointments that i could possibly get so tomorrow i'm actually getting my hair done by someone that i went to high school with her name is Jenna. Every time I'm in Vancouver, if I have to get my done in Vancouver, I always go to my friend Jenna. She's super, super talented. She does like color. So I'm just getting her to touch up my balayage. And I also really need a haircut. The last time I cut my hair, I think was, yeah, in December. I'm going to bring you along. You guys can see the before and afters of my hair. I don't really know if it's going to really look that different, to be honest. I think it'll just look refreshed. Today, the plan is I'm meeting up with a group of friends. We're going to do like an outdoor social distancing thing. I'm first going to UEC and we're just I don't really know what they're doing I'm just joining them we're gonna go to Deep Cove and probably do like the Quarry Rock hike or just at least like explore or even like kayak around there if you guys don't know where Deep Cove is it is actually the place that I went with with Colin so if you guys remember when we went and did the Q&A and had our donuts that's where Deep Cove was and then when I went last time it was like super rainy and stuff like that so this time you're actually gonna see it sunny it is so hot in Vancouver right now I actually have to admit I feel like I'm a pretty big genius for my outfit today because basically what I'm wearing is like a sports bra and my Lululemon aligned leggings basically for the hike that's obviously like my hiking outfit but then after for the shopping I'm just gonna throw on like a black blazer and change my sneakers from my hiking sneakers to like my Air Force Ones so it looks like more like city chic you know what I'm saying so I'm like wow this is like a very versatile outfit but anyway that's basically what's gonna happen today so i'm super excited to take you guys along and kind of show you the last bit of vancouver before next week i'm gonna officially be locked down and concentrated and this is also why i wanted to go back to toronto to be honest because for the sake of my own self-employment i really wanted actually to be locked down focused and not have any distraction even though the vaccination is opening up in my area as well for 18 plus like i think they're gonna start vaccinating soon i still want to go back to Toronto and move back and just focus and because that's where I feel like I grow the most. I will take you guys along and I hope you guys enjoy this week's vlog especially for all the people the new people here who are here for the self-employment series. I'm sorry if this is like not what you were expecting but this is just my last week in Vancouver. Yeah enjoy! I finally found parking near Rec Beach. I'm currently at UBC. Oh my god it was so funny because I chugged a coffee before driving here and I had to pee so badly so I literally had to or like in the middle of nowhere just to go to the outhouse here and then oh my god now i'm lost where am i hold on 
Hi guys. Okay, so originally I was going to take you guys with me to the beach, but then basically my friends were already there and they're just like, Lisa, do not bring your camera because apparently they had their cameras just like visual and then they got yelled at because if you guys didn't know, Rec Beach is a nude beach. So they're like, it's super inappropriate to have a camera there. And like, in case there's like a naked kid in the background, apparently that's now classified as child pornography. So they got yelled at and then basically I just didn't bring my camera. We also had breakfast or brunch, even though it wasn't technically brunch time at this place called OEB. And it's just by Yale Town area. It was pretty good. I got some like sweet, dish it was actually like really great say hi all right i don't usually order sweet things but this looks pretty good yeah and it was called don't you even or something hi i don't know who that was but whatever and then now I'm meeting up with another friend to return her stuff. I've been having her stuff all summer. We weren't seeing each other because of the whole social distancing thing, but we're gonna social distance outside on Robson and I'm gonna return her things. And then we're gonna go for drinks in an outdoor patio. Finally with Yanis, hi. hi. And we're matching again. We always like unintentionally match. We did some damage at Lululemon, Nordstrom. Oh yeah, you helped me buy something from Nordstrom. Thankfully, we did not buy anything at Aritzia. I mean, we wanted to, but yeah. we, we're good. We're, yeah, we're, we're good. We're gonna go to Joe Forte's now, not for happy hour, so this will be interesting. We're gonna bring you guys there. We ended up at Ibisu because Joe Forte's could not take us, but we're sharing a pitcher of beer. Spot number two, still with Yanis. We were still hungry, but we wanted to try something else. So here we are. I'm here today at this wine pop-up by Juju Wines. I'm super excited. I'm gonna bring you with me. Okay, so we are doing aura photos. Oh, there's a little bit of rain on my screen. It's all about like good energy, good vibrations, yes. good vibes. Hi guys, happy day three of fun employment. Today, oh my God, I woke up at five in the morning again and did a little bit of work and then I got really tired so I fell back asleep. I had my very first PR event in Vancouver. Actually, no, this is probably the second one. But anyway, it is with Juju Fine Wines. The experience was honestly so amazing. So because they're launching this line called Juju, they decided to do a aura like kind of energy reading through colors fun fact i'm actually extremely spiritual and i'm very into like energy reading i've tried basically all types of energy readings i've even gone to like a psychic a couple of times i've seen actually i've seen like two psychics now i don't really like to talk about it because i know some people don't believe in that stuff but if you're interested this is something that's actually a huge part of my life that you might find interesting i don't know so when i saw that it was like an energy reading i'm like yay <laughs> like i was so excited Basically what it was, was she took a picture with her light. It's like a special camera and it actually like exposes the light. Your aura, like colors and stuff like that. Which once again, I said, I'll show you guys. After she takes the picture, she like will bring you over and she'll read your energies based on the auras that you're experiencing. As she was doing my reading, I was like, this is insane because it is so accurate to who I am. Obviously she doesn't know me. Like she was even telling me sometimes she'll do her friends she already kind of knows her friends just off of the top of my head for what i can remember i'm just gonna attach a photo here because i'm not gonna hold it up right now while i'm supposedly driving even though technically i'm not really driving because the car's driving but whatever basically my color is like there's a lot of magenta and then there's a lot of blue there's also like a little bit of white in the middle it's really interesting because i think she saved like the white for the last part which i'll also save her for the last part but she was explaining that the magenta is actually a lighter form of green and green is i think it's supposed to be like analytical and then because both sides of me are both pink i'm like very in tune to who other people see me and how i see myself which i think is actually pretty reflective of 
of who I am as a person and how I try to portray myself. I try to be as true to who I am to you guys. I try to give no bullshit. She was like, yeah, it's interesting. Like on both sides, left and right, the colors are the same because how others perceive you and how you perceive yourself is like kind of the same. She was saying that blue because I'm like more of an empath, which that was also something that was like read to me by another spiritual energy reader as well. On the spectrum of like empath and like narcissism, I think I lie apparently more on the empath side. We're at a red light now, so. This is what my photo looks like. As you can see, the magenta and then the blue and then now the white. The white, she actually said it means you're connected to a higher power. And I think she hesitated. Well, I don't know if this is why she hesitated. I don't know if she was like, does that make sense to you? Because it's kind of very like spiritual. And I'm like, that 100% makes sense to me because I'm extremely spiritual. Since this is my last week in Vancouver, I have a few other special plans for later this week that I hope are going to come to light i'm not gonna say it yet because once again like i just really hope that this happens i'm really hoping that i will be able to actually enjoy the wine not just with my parents but also for something else as well so i will let you guys know how the wines taste and yeah it was just such a fun experience if you guys are also interested in like energy readings and stuff like that i'll just leave all of her contact information below once again this is in vancouver so for all my non-vancouver watchers maybe you will look for other energy readings elsewhere. Also, if you're into energy reading and like all that type of stuff and live in Toronto, please leave me a recommendation. I'm so into this stuff and like, yeah, I have a budget for my quarterly energy readings. I think I spend about like $300 each quarter on these type of readings just like to better myself. That's just like, I guess a fun fact that I've never really shared with guys all my friends kind of know so later today like i said i'm gonna do my hair i'm so excited to bring you guys along with me because like i said it is with my friend i'll probably put my face on in a little bit i'll see you guys later finally getting my hair done by jenna you want to say hi, hi. <laughs> hey so excited guys welcome to the fourth day of self-employment so i actually had the worst day today and i will kind of go through it with you basically when i have bad days i just wanted to share because i want to share when not everything is perfect so we're gonna go through why today was bad usually what happens when i have a bad day i actually like welcome it a lot because your good days have to be balanced with a bad day so whenever i have a bad day i'm like yes i'm hitting my quota obviously i don't enjoy it and i have like a tough time with it but at least i know that like i'm hitting my quota for a bad day it makes the good days a lot better and i kind of know that it can only go up from here and that more good days are gonna come. Usually when I have a bad day, I actually come up to Burnaby Mountain. This is, well, obviously in Burnaby. And I actually just come here just to self-reflect and I do this by myself and I do this a lot actually. Like I drive up by myself. I even leave a journal permanently in my car for moments like these because when I have a bad day, I just like to come up here and kind of have a moment to myself to reflect, look at the beautiful scenery. Right now there's a sunset and that's why there are a freaking ton of people. So it's like not ideal right now for me. But yeah, I have a journal in here and I usually will journal. Before I get started on the journaling, I will kind of tell you guys about my bad day. The other reason I actually wanted to tell you guys about my bad day is because it is going to make a lot of sense for what is about to happen tomorrow, okay? So basically, I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen tomorrow and then I'm gonna explain the bad day. So tomorrow, I'm getting a vaccination from my friend okay literally i'm gonna show up at her workplace and she's gonna show up with syringes and a needle and literally give me a vaccine in my car and this sounds absolutely absurd i know 
So let me explain what is happening. Essentially, today I was supposed to get a vaccination prior to me leaving to Toronto, my HPV vaccination. So the HPV vaccination, if you guys have not gotten it yet, is actually a three dose vaccine. I've already gotten the first dose and two months later you have to get your second dose. So today I was due for my second dose of my vaccination. Basically the way that it was working and the doctor that I was seeing, she was just like, yeah, you just have to buy the vaccine at the pharmacy and then bring it back to the office Office so I can administer the vaccine for you. So I did this and I did this for my first dose. When I was booking for my second dose, I called in, but then that doctor that usually does all of my work and stuff like that is not available. So she's like, do you mind seeing another doctor to do your vaccine? And I'm like, I really don't care who does my vaccine as long as the vaccine is in my arm. Basically, I show up to the clinic with my vaccination. The lady at the reception was like, so the doctor's gonna charge you $20 for administering this vaccination and i'm just like okay but why because the first dose was free at least it's known through all the pharmacies that i've called for this vaccination the doctor herself the first one that did my vaccine physicians don't charge for administering the vaccination as proven because my first dose was not charged i asked the receptionist i'm like are you sure like can you verify with a doctor because the first dose which i got done here and you can even see on your receipt and she's like yeah i know i like completely see that this was free she's like okay i'm gonna message the doctor through her internal portal so she messages him 20 to like 30 minutes later i'm just like so what's happening like what did he say so is he gonna do it like what's happening she just said oh he just went to the next patient and i'm like wait what do you mean am i getting this vaccination she's like he never responded and he just skipped you and went straight to the next person and i was like this is so unprofessional because she explained to me that all doctors are different and he wanted to charge me 20 dollars to put the vaccination in my arm i didn't even straight up said no i just asked her i'm like can you ask him if it can be waived because it was waived the first time and he never gave an answer instead of giving an answer he just skipped me to the next person by then i have been at the clinic for 45 minutes past my appointment time i had another appointment afterwards so i was like i have to go can he come and do my vaccine vaccination even if i paid and she's like well yeah if you want to pay 20 dollars, but even then you have to wait 10 minutes now you have to wait for this next person to be completely done and i was like this is absolutely unprofessional you didn't want to answer the question of whether or not this can be waived so you skipped me now i'm just like okay first of all the issue of me getting this vaccination and having to pay you in my opinion was already a little bit absurd because the first dose that i got in the exact same clinic was free and i was told that getting this administered is going to be free but then the second reason that makes this whole thing absurd is that this guy refused to answer the question and instead of answering it he just skipped me basically even if i wanted to pay him i couldn't because i would have to wait for this next person to be done which then it conflicted with my next commitment essentially i was there for 45 minutes i just had to walk out i couldn't book another appointment because my flight is on sunday and the doctor was unable to see me my original doctor was unable to see me before sunday i can also just like go to the pharmacy i guess for them to administer this my best friend she's a nurse she's a registered nurse and licensed nurse i'm gonna stop by the hospital tomorrow she's just grabbing the needle and stuff and tomorrow we're gonna get my vaccine done by my friend in my car because of this i was actually like super bothered because i was late Late to my appointment my vaccination needed to be fridged and i had to leave so i ended up having to drive to Teresa's house borrow her fridge leave my vaccination in her fridge go to my next thing and then come back and pick up my vaccination like this was just so unprofessional i don't know this was just my terrible experience for the rest of the day i just like was in such a terrible mood but also kind of wanted to kind of give the so what of the situation what i usually do when i do encounter a bad day is that number one like i said i do this this whole Burnaby Mountain routine. I come up here anyway a few days just to clear the air. The second thing is that even myself through this entire thing, like I recognize that for 30 straight minutes, I was extremely ragey and just very much in a bad mood. I was severely angry for 30 minutes. And this is something that I'm taking to my next therapy session to kind of ask him, how do we reduce the time that I'm angry? And how do we make this a little bit better the next
next time something like this happens. This is why I go to weekly therapy sessions because I always feel like something like this always happens and I'm always trying to improve myself. Even in today's situation, I recognize that I can handle this situation internally a lot better and I can do better. I don't want to be this angry person. I don't like negative energy and this is something that I'm going into therapy this upcoming week to be like, how do I handle this internally a lot better without having to like ruin my day? But yeah, that's kind of what I wanted to share with you guys and I think it is definitely very important because I'm all about like good energy and a lot of the things that have been reflective of my life now has been a result of constant therapy work and stuff like that so I can focus my mental energy on my career and making money and having good people around me living a dream job life etc it's very important to me to also welcome the bad days and learn how to handle it a lot better so if you guys are also having a bad day I don't know these are kind of my strategies to kind of mitigate that and I always want to improve myself I don't know I hope this like resonates with somebody that's just kind of how I handle my bad days now I'm gonna go journal and tomorrow I will take you guys along when administers my freaking vaccination so I will see you guys tomorrow hi guys this is the next day I'm not gonna show but basically I'm here with my vaccine I cannot believe this is happening this is so ridiculous so anyway I am here and I have my vaccination called Gardasil 9 I'm just getting a vaccination on my arm <laughs> oh wait maybe I should do my left arm this entire process just like blows my mind right now <laughs> thank god you're an actual like licensed nurse <laughs> so right. this is not actually that sketchy but like it's either this or a pharmacy, so I might as well get it done by my best friend. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of stuff that has happened in this car. <laughs> this is for the book. Okay. Can you relax it too? Okay. How do you know where to... Oh, I, I just feel for the, um, the muscle. Okay, one, two, three. Is that it? That's it. That was so fast. I haven't even bleeding. I'll just put a band-aid there though anyway. Okay. If people didn't know better, they think I'm on drugs. <laughs> like just like needles and like just shooting up in a car. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're See, was that hard? That was one minute. That doctor wanted to charge me twenty dollars 